I don't know. I don't like it, and I feel like the Bucks are going to smash that spread. <laughs> it would be ugly, oh, but man. I never know with the Dolphins' defense. It's tough. You know, not going to be a good offense. Yeah, I mean, it's tough with the backup quarterback. Like, I would love for Miami to get a win this week just because for Buffalo to get that number one seed, we beat Kansas City, y'all beat Tampa Bay. Like, that would be that would be ideal for us. Yeah. Do us a favor, huh? Oh, we'll work on it. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready, honestly, just to get rolling into things. So welcome back, guys, into Crushing the Competition. Uh, we are your hosts, Tony, Skylar. Uh, we aim to aid you in both crushing your competition and winning championships. So glad to have you tuning back in. If you are, we've made it. We're at week five. Uh, you know, we got we got a lot we want to talk about today. We're gonna we're gonna start out with a little uh, love them or leave them. Kind of our first quarter of the season heroes. So we're, we're both gonna kind of talk about one guy at each position. And uh, Tony, we're gonna start with you with a quarterback who has been kind of an MVP for people's teams to start the year. And do you love him rest of the year? Or do you uh, you gonna you gonna kind of leave him? Oh, I love him. He's actually, uh, he leads the league in rushing touchdowns, and his name is Sam Darnold. That's not Josh Allen. <laughs> Does he lead now? Did he take over? No, but he'll finish there. He does. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, dude. I, so, Sam Darnold, he has been such a surprise this year. I mean, I know there was, like, so many people on the fence about Darnold with, you know, was he really going to be good outside of Adam Gaze? Well, yeah, he is, and Matt Rule is taking advantage of that because they're killing it. I mean, even without McCaffrey, they competed with the juggernaut Dallas Cowboys offense. Like, if you don't, if you lose your starting running back, one of if not the best running back in the league, and still compete with a high-powered offense like that, Darnold's legit, and he's QB five in fantasy right now, and I'm rolling with him. In my home league, I got him for two bucks on waivers right before the first game of the year. That's working out pleasantly, so. I might be biased, but I still really do think he's going to kill it the rest of this year. Yeah, I, I honestly, uh, I bring up Allen not only because he's my guy, but it's, he's, he's Sam Darnold's best friend. Darnold is Allen's best friend. I'm sure those two behind closed doors are kind of joking at each other because they're both sitting there three and one. You know, they're, they, you know, Darnold's got him on rushing touchdowns right now, but that's kind of Allen's forte. So I bet I bet those two are kind of making jokes. And I love, I love honestly, what I love from Darnold that I think is more sustainable is how they're. They seem to be drawing up these runs for him, which for a guy seems to be the first time that's happened we've seen him, where they're trying to use him in more ways than just one. Um, even with McCaffrey in, all the wide receivers in, he's still getting these design run plays. And I think there is some sustainability to that, honestly. Um, you know, I still think there's some suspect things in his play. He had a bad interception last week in a pivotal point of the game where he just didn't seem to see digs. He jumped the route. He, he took the ball. So I think there's a little bit of the old Darnold, the good with the bad, uh, but his team seems to be a little better, and I'm happy for him to see him in a position. If he does it, if rest of the season he we we're still loving him, uh, I will apologize because I was I wasn't a believer in uh, what he could do this year. Uh, um, shame, shame. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> early days, early days. Um, you know, before I bring up uh, my MVP for the early season for for quarterbacks, we'll give an honorable mention to Daniel Jones. He's been the QB six on the season, and Kyler Murray, who's the the QB two on the season. So those two kind of, you know, different different stories. Kyler's done exact Kyler and you know and Mahomes the right where you've drafted them, and then yeah. Daniel Jones is more like Darnold, where a guy you got on the cheap cheap who's been you know real good. So uh, Jalen Hurts is a guy you know he was kind of a question mark. He you knew he with his feet had that top ten potential. He's QB three on the year, and I I love him rest of the season. I think I think there's truth to that. I think he's probably gonna keep this job for the full season, which we weren't a hundred percent sure on coming in, and uh, he's been great. He gets it on. He does everything you want on the ground. He's been using some of his weapons he's also like kind of following josh allen's footsteps where like no one was really sure how we'd go into year two and like here he is just absolutely balling out and like everyone i feel like he still needs a couple weeks for a good majority of people for them to be like okay this guy's legit but like he's qb3 so i don't know why they're still waiting but he's here and he's killing it yeah i think for fantasy like he's here to stay at least for this season for top 10 yeah. I, think he's, I think he sleepwalks the rest of the year into a top 10 i think his floor is just so safe kind of like what you saw from alan on where but also there's there's a lot of question marks in his game there's still things that need to get worked on in real yeah. football but for fantasy i love what we've seen so far uh i'll roll into your hero for running back is cordell patterson who the heck saw this coming dude is rb3 on the year uh you know I think this one probably lands somewhere in the middle. I don't know if he, he, I just don't know if he finishes this high, but with, with a start like this, 
you know, if there's any truth to it, if he's a flex option for the rest of the year, which at this point, that's how you have to operate, there's probably a little truth to this. So, you know, if you've been playing Cordell Patterson the last, probably at least the last two weeks, because maybe week two gave you the confidence to put him in for week three, week four, um, you're, you're probably a 3-1 and one or 4-0 and oh team. So he's been an MVP for your season. Uh, right now, you got to operate with him in your flex until, he, you know, he gives you a reason otherwise. Uh, honorable mentions, we're going to do Kareem Hunt. Dude's RB6 on the season. Um, I think his numbers aren't the most sustainable. I mean, I think he'll finish top 18 like he seemingly does every year, but RB6 is temper your expectations moving forward. And then I want to throw out Zeke because after week one, everyone's complaining about Zeke. Dude's RB5 on the season chill. Like, the dude's still he's, – that, that offense is high-powered. He'll get his. Uh, so who, who do you – who do you who's been a hero for some of your teams here, Tony? Uh, Najee Harris. Uh, whether the Steelers look like shit or – Whatever you want to say, it, Matt Canada sucks. It doesn't matter. Najee's getting all kinds of targets, and his work has increased over the four, past four weeks. I mean, it was. I think this was the first week he had less than a ninety percent snap share, and I think it was around eighty percent. And it's like, oh darn, he's only getting eighty percent of the snaps. Just the ultimate Big Ben demise with the Najee Harry rise is working out. Uh, we saw what 19 targets two weeks ago, and I think he was double digits again this week. Like he's RB seven right now and half PPR. Like if you drafted Najee and you got him as your RB two, you're chilling. He has been doing super well. You're pretty pleased. I mean, and yeah. talking about guys you probably didn't draft as your first from their position. Who's who's a wide receiver who's been an MVP for your team? Debo Samuel. Yeah. What's he, wide receiver three right now? Wide receiver three right now. He was pre-draft ranking for me. He was wide receiver 52. Was I being disrespectful? Probably, but, like, you had Ayuk, who had all the hype this offseason. Kittle was coming back, supposed to be healthy. Then you got to worry about their run game because Kyle Shanahan likes to run the ball constantly. I just thought he'd be the odd man out. I, I was super wrong, and it's been the exact opposite. He is making everyone else look like the odd man out. And absolutely destroying it at wide receiver three right now. I think he could potentially – does he have the most receiving yards still? Or did that change? I, don't uh, know, I'm not I sure, think that but... might be Cooper. but Okay, yeah, Cooper Cup probably passed him. But, like, still, it, it's insane what he's doing. And I do think he sustains it because we saw in the second half he had, did just as well with Trey Lance as he did with Jimmy Garoppolo. So I, I, I love him, and I think he continues to do that for the rest of the season. Dude, if, if, if Lance is going to step in and be tossing him 70-yard bombs, I mean, we love it. Like, this dude's being uh, manufactured into the offense. He's getting his touches. Like, he's in your lineup rest of the year. There's no question about it. Like, Easily. you see the ceiling right here, which is something people said he didn't necessarily have. You know, like, we, he was in the same category with guys like LaVisca Chanel or Rondell Moore, you know, in yeah. preseason. And here he is. He's 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 doing a lot more than that. So I, I, mean, I have him in a keeper league. And I had Adam Thielen, Calvin Ridley, and Debo Samuel. I shipped off Adam Thielen today for Kareem Hunt in a package just because I needed running back help, and I knew Debo Samuel could get me those wide receiver two numbers at the least. Yeah. Through four weeks, I'm just confident. I'm like, screw it. I'm selling Adam Thielen because he wasn't one of my keepers, and I'm going to get a running back who's absolutely killing right now with Kareem Hunt. Exactly. Let's just keep the uh, injury bug away from Debo. Let's keep our San Francisco players freaking healthy, man. Uh, DJ Moore is a wide receiver right now. He's a hero for your team. Dude is just balling out. He's adding touchdowns to his game. I don't know if that's Darnold or if that's a progression in his game, or they're finally feeding him the ball, which, like, in the first half. Like, we don't have to wait till the fourth quarter to see DJ Moore get some catches, and I freaking love it. Like, just seeing yeah. this dude, he's the wide receiver four on the year. Like, people have been waiting for this breakout i know it's a four game sample size but they've been waiting this for four years oh like, yeah this is what we want from dj moore and he's here he's here he's in your lineup going forward there's going to be next to no names above him in your starting lineup so i love that for dj moore i love it for your team love him rest of season uh we're going to shout out cooper cup mike williams jamar chase tyree kill brandon cooks like these are just dudes who have all returned great value where you got them. They're all balling out. They're all, you know, the one furthest on that list is Cooks at 13, but he was being drafted outside the top 40. So all these guys, we we, we love all of them going forward. Now, our tight end picks here, I'm curious to know if, if, you do, if you're going to love them or leave them moving forward because a lot of with touchdown production leans on touchdowns. So do you think there's 
they just got him early or it's sustainable. Uh, I'm going to throw the first one back to you. Who's who's your yeah. tight end MVP early season? Well, uh, yeah, it's actually your guy from Buffalo, Dawson Knox. Tight end four right now, just for whatever reason, has this great relationship with the Josh Allen now. Uh, we saw them doing a touchdown celebration together. What was the celebration? I forget. It was something <laughs> silly. They've always been was... boys. They've always been boys. Doss has been one of the boys. Yeah, but you know what I mean? That connection's finally happening on the field. Love to see and, it. And you're loving it because and even in two tight end leagues in the offseason for Dynasty, I got Dawson Knox as probably my fourth or fifth tight end in some leagues. Like yeah. That jump for him has been incredible. And, I again, I don't know if – you know, the now kind of leaning into like whether I love or hate him for the rest of the season. I, I don't know if Diggs starts like getting more open because teams have to pay attention to Knox more or this or that. Like I'm kind of 50 50. I have leagues where I'm rolling with him. So I, I do have confidence, but I'm just kind of weary right now. I, I don't know how it'll translate rest of the season if things are going to go back Diggs' way, like I said, but I'm loving it. And he's done really good things if you've played him the last two weeks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with a tight end, you just want a guy who can get three catches, really three, maybe four catches with touchdown upside. Yeah. Like if you don't, if you don't get our other heroes like Wow or Kelsey Hawk, like if you don't get them, like that's that's the best you can hope for. So I think it's it's probably somewhere in the middle for Knox too. It's like you're just hoping for the touchdown, but he's attached to an offense that scores thirty plus points every single game. So he's as good of a chance as anyone. And another guy who's on a team that can put up thirty plus points every single week is Gronk. Gronk early season, I know he didn't play this week. He's still tight end three. Like, it's touchdowns. And, you know, I think you're going to have to wait probably another couple weeks before he's back. He's 100%. But he's, I think he's, there's truth to it. I think it's, you know, it's, we, we love him much the season again. I think he's going to be the finish the year double digit touchdowns. He gets you what you want from a touch, from a tight end standpoint. He's going to get his three catches a game. You just hope one's for a touchdown. Gronk gonna Gronk, baby. Gronk gonna Gronk.